The Freedevort impact structure is the largest verified impact site on Earth. This event was unimaginable in its scale of destructivity. The crater itself has long eroded away, but even with that, you cannot hide what this event did to the surrounding rocks. In its heyday, it's estimated that this crater was between 180 to 300 kilometers across when it was originally formed. If it was 300 kilometers across, that would mean it is double the size of the Chicxulub crater, which was formed by the collision that we associate with ending the reign of the dinosaurs. So in this video, we're heading to South Africa to look at the largest single impact site on our planet that we've discovered thus far. The Friedevort asteroid was an absolute monster. If it hit today, we can say goodbye to life as we know it. It was so massive that it's estimated to have been one of the largest asteroids to have struck our planet since the Hadean Eon some 4 billion years ago. With that being said, this impact event occurred around 2000 million years ago. How do we know? Zircon dating. Radioactive decay is very reliable, and these tiny little crystals are like the mineral versions of a USB drive, in that they store very reliable data within them, and it allows us to successfully date these types of events with great accuracy. The asteroid itself has an estimated size of between 20 to 25 kilometers, and was traveling at an intense 15 to 25 kilometers per second. As per usual, we see the typical central uplift dome that we saw in the videos that we made on the asteroid that hit South Australia and in the video that we released yesterday, where we covered one of the largest verified impact sites on our planet that occurred in Western Australia. This central uplift dome forms as a result of a rebound that occurs post-collision. When these massive asteroids initially make contact with the Earth, the force is so tremendous that it literally melts the crust in an instant and temporarily turns it into a hot plasma, as the asteroid itself dives kilometers into the Earth. After the Earth has been sufficiently pounded, the plasma rebounds, cools, and solidifies into rock again, leaving behind these noticeable protrusions right in the middle of impact centers. In South Africa, this zone of uplift is known as the Friedevort Dome, and it consists of a partial ring of hills that are 70 kilometers in diameter. Originally, people interpreted this place as having a volcanic origin, until the discovery of shatter cones and shocked quartz in the 90s. Both of these are telltale signs of extraterrestrial impacts, as the force required to form them far exceeds the force that could be applied by any natural process that's present on Earth. Only an impact event, or a nuke, can create the types of pressure necessary to form these two phenomenon. The cool thing about this place is it's a multiple ringed impact structure. Now because this is very eroded, here's a great example of a complete one on the moon Callisto. As the name suggests, multiple rings were created as the force of the impact radiated outward. And during this event, the distortion of the Witwatersrand Basin, the Ventersdorp Lavas, and the Transvaal Supergroup occurred. The rocks form partial rings around the impact structure, and because the rocks of the Witwatersrand are so erosion resistant, with them comprised of silica enriched rocks like quartzite, it's visible on Google Earth in present day near the impact center. The area where this asteroid struck is actually one of the oldest cratons to exist on our planet, with it being around 3.9 billion years old. So it appears as though this was dry land when this event occurred. But it's obvious that this didn't need to impact the oceans to cause tsunamis, as the earthquakes and pronounced volcanism that would have been triggered by this event from the enormous pressure that rippled outward in all directions was more than enough to bridge that gap. I can imagine earthquakes occurring at a magnitude far, far beyond anything that humans have seen during this, shaking literally the entire planet. Not one single stretch of land was spared during this cataclysmic situation. And much like yesterday's video, the destruction it wrought came in many ways. Firstly, this event would have made its presence known in a night sky, many months before it arrived, beginning as little more than a dot, and growing in size bit by bit as it edged closer and closer to our planet, until, one day, it suddenly appeared in a menacing way burning bright at a size that was as large as the sun when viewed from the ground. But obviously, nothing existed back then to look up and see it, 
as life was more or less microscopic at this point. For reference, the Chicxulub asteroid was larger than Mount Everest. This was, at its highest estimate, double that. So imagine something double the size of Everest greeting you one fateful morning. Terrifying. As it makes contact with solid ground, a blinding flash of bright light illuminates the sky, and it grows larger and larger in size with each passing moment. The thermal radiation released by the explosion travels outward in an ever-growing concentric ring. If animals and plants were alive, they would be instantly vaporised by this. But since they aren't, only rocks were present to bear witness to this and to be blasted by the shockwave that followed. But we have everything else. Volcanic eruptions got triggered as shockwaves passed through every bit of the Earth, affecting areas on the opposite side of the planet. The entire planet shook ferociously, seemingly without end. And, as mentioned before, when these events occur, the crust where the asteroid hit is temporarily turned into a gooey, liquid, hot plasma as the asteroid forces its way deeper into the Earth. And after that, this hot plasma rebounded, temporarily forming a mountain 20 kilometers high before dropping back in on itself and forming the central uplift zone that we see today. An astronomical amount of material is mass ejected out of the planet and into space, propelling Earth debris as far as Mars and beyond it. Much of it, however, falls back down to the Earth, and in doing so, it superheats the atmosphere, creating a situation known as a heat shock, where the air in the planet literally becomes superheated for a short period of time, further scorching everything. Volcanism in the form of supervolcanoes and flood basaltic eruptions would have definitely followed this event. Now, just to nerd out a bit, if this asteroid had have landed in a deep ocean, at its most conservative estimate, a two kilometer high mega tsunami would have been generated. Can you imagine how horrifying, yet awe-inspiring, that would be to witness? Oof, damn. After this event, from space, Earth would have looked like hell. Literally. It was one way, only moments prior, and now it's been transformed into something that would have been unrecognisable from its former self. And this would have been how it remained for many years after this event, as Earth slowly healed from the wounds inflicted. Meanwhile, any form of life back then more than likely avoided almost all the disastrous things that were triggered by this event, with it chilling out at the bottom of the ocean floor, chowing away on the gases that were being churned out of volcanic vents non-stop. And so, this is the story of the world's largest known and verified single impact site. Thanks for watching.